It's Us Alive podcast, most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Ya despiértense, huevones, porque ya amaneció. Join in by my guy, Pepe, on this podcast. Once again, appreciate you for, for sitting in with me. Thank you for inviting me. We have a special guest. Very special guest. Very special. Not your usual guest. Not your... I guess you could kind of say getting into the influencer side of it because <laughs> social media is popping. Your, your videos are going viral. But I do want to say... We have the honor to have Mr. AJ Barrera in the house, baby. Let's Thank go. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. A psychic, a medium, yep. Yep. a human. Yep. First and foremost. First, yeah, I was just first, first and, and foremost, foremost a yes. human. <laughs> so people don't get it get it uh, twisted on that. But, man, thank you so much for for coming through on this rainy alley. Yeah, oh, thank you for having me. You know, thank you for being patient with the time and traffic and everything. So, um, yeah. We understand. understand you. <laughs> we definitely understand. But first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, had clients this morning. You know, it's kind of part of my everyday life. So I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, I'm blessed that I get to talk to people from literally from all around the world because of technology of Zoom and so on and so forth. So people in Australia, Germany, you know, from India, wherever, you know, all over. So, um, you know, everyone's looking for healing and validation. They're all looking for guidance at some point in their life. So yeah. I think a lot of people have the misconception of what I do, but it's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being, you know, I just do everything the way you guys do it, but I just, you know, work with people just in a different yeah, way. Yeah. It's, you have a, you have a talent, you have a special gift. Yeah. And I think that's one thing we all try to search for is what is our gift in this world? What can we give to the people? What can we give to help others? And you just do it at a whole nother scale right. that, you know, none of us in this room have, but you can hear a pin drop in this room. <laughs> <laughs> what what city did you grow up in? I grew up in Hacienda Heights. So a awesome. small little suburban city, uh, you know, SGV kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, I know the whole areas, the surroundings of, you know, La Puente, West Covina, you, you name it all. But the oldest, you know, the youngest. Yeah, uh, I'm the third out of four, four siblings. Yeah, the third. Yeah. So, I, you know, my family wasn't a big believer in this work. But, you know, I, I come from a very, you know, simple family and so on. So forth. very humble, you know, um, humble beginnings. And a lot of people see my work and what I'm doing and all the other stuff that I do that go along with it. But I'm just like, I'm the same kid from SGV. Like nothing has changed about me except that I'm on a show or I'm on do this on that. But I love what I do. I love what I do. My family supports me and I'm beyond blessed. Like I said, I can't, I can't stress it enough. So for the people that don't know what you do, what is it that you do exactly? Um, so in, in lame man's terms, I bridge two worlds together. So it's a physical world and those who have passed on. So I connect loved ones, you know, um, our, our spirit guides, our, our loved ones who have passed on. Um, to those here in the physical realm. And then also as a psychic part of it, I give people advice, guidance, and so on and so forth. So if there's certain blockages that one has in their life, I kind of help them lead them to the direction where they need to be, basically. So, you know, a lot of people see, you know, psychics as the crystal balls and the tarot cards right. and so on and so forth, which, which is part of it, you know what I mean? It, it's a tool. But as mediumship, you know, as a medium, I have one foot in the physical world and one foot in the afterlife, which is where I bridge that connection, which is becomes the medium. So this is how the psychic medium per, um, part works. Yeah. Some people are spiritual mediums. Some people are mediums. Some people are trans mediums, uh, psychics, and some people are just psychic mediums. I, I'm both. I'm a psychic medium. Yeah. Wow. When, yeah, there's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, no, most definitely. So this became informative for everybody watching. Yeah, I think we all learned a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to this. There's a yeah. lot. Of, when was your, the first time you, you realized that you had one foot in both worlds? I think really when I was in high school, because that's when my ability really came together, you know, so during junior high, I was reading tarot cards and so on and so forth. I was, you know, telling people what was going on in their life, like predictions and so on and so forth. And yeah. I thought like, hey, I'm a pretty good guesser. I'm guessing all this information and so on and so forth. So I just kind of like started believing in what I was telling people and recognizing like, oh, I might be onto something because I realized I did not need the tarot cards anymore that that was just a crutch, it was a tool. So I ended up uh, meeting my high school teacher, my science and art teacher, who was a medium herself and still is today. She's the one that told me I had the ability to communicate with the other side. I did not know I had the ability. So at that moment, I was just like, how does she know this? 
how she knows this. And but, so we kind of build that relationship for like four years. And let me backtrack on certain things as well, because a lot of people think that, you know, especially with all these kind of like, you know, things that you hear in the news with teachers and students and so on. So it wasn't anything like that. So it, <laughs> it was more of a casual teaching, learning base and so on and yeah. so forth. And, uh, and, and to backtrack on that, my mom worked at the school too, as well. She worked at my high school. So, oh, okay, okay. um, so it wasn't really anything bad or so on and so forth, but you have to kind of understand, like for me growing up doing this work, I had no idea what the heck I was walking into. So I guess my first experience was really in high school, really connected with spirit more so than anything else. Um, as an intuitive, I was, I was doing that at a very young age, 12, 11 years old or so. How did it feel the first time you ever did it? I mean, yeah. was it scary? Was it just something that you were used to? Sure. I thought it was normal. I thought did it was normal. You? Yeah, I thought it was normal. Mm. I thought everyone had the ability to do what I do or the ability to, to see spirit or hear spirit or, or dream of them and so on and so forth. So for me, it wasn't abnormal. Like yeah. even when I saw auras around people and colors, which I don't see that often to this day, but when I used to, it was part of my life. I thought everyone saw auras. So yeah. even when sometimes when people speak to me, like in, in a reading or just in a casual conversation, yeah. I see color mm -hmm. coming out of the mouth and that color helps me identify where that person's at in their life, emotionally, physically, mentally, mm -hmm. or what they're going through maybe with loss. So yeah. Is there certain colors that's that signify for something or represent something? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to, it's always my own interpretation, my own okay. meaning. So it's not going to mean the main, the same thing to you mm -hmm. or to another medium or psychic or so on and so forth, because kind of think as tarot, you know, they're, they're, you're given a book, like a little kind of workbook, how yeah. to work with tarot and so on and so forth. But with me, I did not use that book. I kind of literally tore it up, threw it in the trash. And I went based upon my interpretation and what mm -hmm. I felt, what those cards meant to me. And that's mm -hmm. how I build my vocabulary of reading tarot cards. Oh, so do you yeah. see any specific colors right now? No, no, I, I don't see them that often. It just happens, okay. you know, organically. It happens when, even with certain clients. Um, sometimes I see a color when they're speaking or I see yeah. an aura around them, but it doesn't happen that often. I think uh, the re just recently, I think this morning, only one of my clients this morning was the one that I just saw a color, but yeah. the other clients I don't, you know, so it just really depends on what someone's vibrating. You mentioned earlier that it was hard at first for your family to oh. understand <laughs> this type of work because... I mean, again, we, if you grew up in, like, I see in the Heights, just like we grew up in Baldwin Park. So we're from the SGB. Oh, yeah. We're from uh, similar areas. Our parents always wanted us or want us to just be successful, have a, a certain job that just lines up success. So when we go into entrepreneurship and other sides of that's not a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer, a teacher, they're like, Estás bien? Right. Are you okay? <laughs> yep. Are you sure about this? Right. Your line of work is special. It's a gift. Yeah. How was that? Like, hey, mom, dad. Yeah. So, I mean, the way it worked for me, like, um, you know, and I want to, you know, say too, like a lot of people call the, what I do a gift. I, I, it's really an ability that we all have. Yeah. We all can develop this ability. We all can develop psychic mediumship work. So I always try to stress to people like this is an ability. Like just think of like Pavarotti, who is a great singer, you know, he has a gift of singing or you have like Mariah Carey who has, you know, the gift of, you know, this or that, like you got to think of the, each person has their own gift, musicians and so on and so forth. That's their ability. They learned how yeah. to find their craft or hone their craft. Same thing with me. Yeah. It's just an ability that I learned how to hone my craft into my psychic mediumship work. But with my parents, my mom, um, she knew more about the work because she worked at my, literally my mom was at every school that I went to from elementary, junior high school to high school. So my mom never left. She was working at all different schools, all three schools. And I'm like, how can I get away from this? And I couldn't get away from that. So my mom knew everything, what was going on with my work, my abilities and so on and so forth. So when I uh, started going to, into this work, oh, I just keep talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Okay. you're fine. All right. Yeah, but when I started doing this work, you know, a lot of things started happening where my, uh, what do you call it? My mom was kind of like, okay, he's a consultant, he's a consultant, he's a consultant. She would tell people that. And she would never tell people, like, he's a psychic medium or this and that because of fear of religion. Yeah. I grew up Catholic and I grew up, you know, being involved in church and so on and so forth, uh, being involved in youth ministries, the whole nine yards. So for them, it was like really taboo yeah. in the process of doing this work. But my dad, did not really, you know, like he wasn't a really big believer or did not, I guess he didn't really understand what a medium was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I remember first telling my dad um, when I was going to do like kind of my first really big gig. And I said, hey, dad, you know, I'm going to be on Coast 103.5, you know, from seven to midnight. They're doing a show called Angels in Waiting and I'm going to be on the radio. 
and my dad goes, oh, for what? He goes, I, I'm a medium. And my dad goes, a medium? Like, like the one on the freeway, like thinking a medium. And, and then I'm like, I go, no, I go like, he, again, people don't know the terms. They think, yeah, you know, so right. psychic is so cliche. It's kind of like taboo sometimes to use, but my, my parents did not really know pr exactly what my work was about. So yeah. they really got to hear my work and my craft at 19 years old on the radio. And um, that's when they learned about like how good my work was at 19 years old so i continue to develop my abilities every year that i do this work every month every day i'm learning new references new symbols and so on and so forth so i will never understand and know everything about this work but from my belief as my family they just um embraced it and allowed me to nurture it out of all your family members uh are you the only one that has this gift or um this type of ability i think we all have the ability again we all have the ability but i believe that you know my sister's um Especially my younger sister, I think she would have been um, pretty, really well at this work if she like followed through, like practicing and doing readings mm -hmm. and this and that. Mm -hmm. But I scared the crap out of her because the fear of the unknown, the fear of not really knowing what's happening. We used to see things uh, much younger in our, in our home in Hacienda Heights, and we would see orbs and colors and this and that. And I remember mm -hmm. one day in the bedroom, um, I was in my bedroom and I heard a voice, which I thought it was a voice, yeah. it was my own thought. And it said, grab the camera, grab the camera, which was a digital camera. So I went to go grab the camera and I just snapped a photo in the hallway. And on the digital camera or on the photo was a woman holding a little boy's hand. And all my parents can speak on that. They have the photo and this and that. So yeah. for me, it was part of just connecting with that. So that's when I knew uh, I was connecting with the vibration. I did not know who that spirit was, did not know who they were. And I literally have goosebumps because that is something that has stuck with the whole family. Like even now, my, my parents joke around, like they don't like me coming over because they say like, <laughs> like take your friends with you. You're like they, bring yeah. the spirits. You're attracting them. <laughs> They come yeah. out. Yeah. Even, even yeah. Even when yeah. I go over to the house, like for a couple hours or whatever, like there's been things where, you know, when CDs were like still a thing, you know, and my, my parents, I think were like cleaning out the rooms or one of the back rooms or whatever. And they had a, a stack of CDs just on the like dresser or whatever they had there. And they were watching TV and all of a sudden the stack of CDs just flew right off the shelf. And so my dad's all right, shut off the TV and went to bed. So again, there's unique things that happen, but yeah. to me, it's normal. I don't fear it. And I think because I know it comes from God, it comes from good light. It comes from good intention. And wow. I work from place of love and God, you know what I mean? So I wow. believe that, you know, without him, I wouldn't be doing this work. Do you tend at, at any point, did you tend to struggle with that? Like knowing this was God's work for you and knowing yeah. like, cause th that is a, I would say it's a difficult type of calling, calling, yeah. right? Because yeah. you're seeing how you said you snapped a picture and you're seeing these other sides to <laughs> the world, but you're also f having faith and like, you know, this is God's sign for me. So how is that balance of faith for you and, and religion? Yeah, I, I still believe in God. I still pray. I, that's still part of my life. I still meditate. So prayer meditation is always key to my work. Yeah. So even when I do any interview, any anything that's relating to my work, my yeah. craft, prayer and meditation is always involved because it's what keeps me grounded what keeps me protected. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just really having a good relationship with, you know, some people call it the universe source or their angels or their guides, whatever you want to call it. It's an energy. It's a form. And I believe that yeah. if I build a healthy um, spiritualism and also, um, I guess, faith, it balances both because people don't really understand religion and spirituality. But if you mm -hmm. understand them both, like Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, all that stuff, they blend beautifully together. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think we're, we're taking back because again, you're giving us uh, the background, the terms, and just kind of your experiences of how this how this person came to be, which is your gift. Again, I said at the beginning, we all in life tend to struggle to find our gift, whether it's early on or whether it's later on in life. But you found your calling and you stuck with it, and you're going with it, and you've been able to help people. Yeah. I mean, I've always wanted to help people like in some capacity. So, you know, as you were mentioning about like your parents want you to be a doctor or a lawyer, like, yeah. they want you to have like, you know, some sort of future planned, you know, for me, my, my, my plan was to be in law enforcement or to be a firefighter. That was truly the path that was going on. And uh, at the age of 19, that's when everything changed for me. And that's where uh, I stopped going to classes. I stopped, stopped taking my uh, fire, uh, fire um, EMT classes and all that stuff. So it was, so it was kind of like, okay, I guess this is not the path I'm choosing. The path chose me is what I tell people. Mm -hmm. So I, I really believe the connection. So I told God, if this is what I'm supposed to do, just continue to open up the doors, continue to open up the doors, and I'll just walk through them. And I've been walking through them since 19 years old. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us Come are on. getting older. We still don't know what door to walk through. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 That's what people tell me. Like, you're lucky you get to know, you know, you knew what you wanted to do. I did not know because I still thought about like, you know, going back and pursuing being a fire fireman or being an ENT or, or a police officer. So years changed down the road because now I work with, you know, law enforcement just in a different capacity with missing persons and homicides and families and things of that nature, which I donate my time pro bono for any cases. And that's not just like in the city of LA, that's like even their small departments, big departments all over the U S and international. So it's part of a committee. And um, I, I need to stress it on this podcast and to anyone else listening is that psychics and mediums do not solve cases. They do not. We're just a tool in their tool belt and in, in the tool and the tool belt and the detective. So kind of consider me as like the canine. I just sniff out the information and the detective literally has to put, put it together and find probable cause and legal matters and so on and so forth to get the rights to find out the findings. Can, can you talk about one that has stuck in your mind or one that yeah. has lived yeah. for you forever? Yeah, I mean, it's the very first one. I was probably 20, 20 years old, maybe 20. Th- between 20 and 21 mm-hmm. and I was doing phone readings at the time I was still on radio and uh, a family called me up or a lady called me up and looking for her for her brother and I started bringing through information and this and that and I had I don't have any information about who people want to connect with even to this day it's like they sit in there just like I might get mom dad brother and sister and they actually want to hear from their husband not from all these different people. So it's really organically how spirit shows up. So the same thing with this reading was her brother came through and I was bringing through all this information. So afterwards, uh, she didn't tell me anything about it, which was just a normal one-on-one reading. Mm-hmm. Then she ended up having another reading with me and said, hey, can you talk to this detective? He's on the phone with us. Can you give us more information, more insight? Uh, people don't know this about me, but I am an artist at heart. So I can do composites, drawing, oils, and all that stuff. So I ended up uh, building the two composites of the people that were involved. Um, shit you not, the people that they had, um, I guess, witnesses of the people that were involved were almost identical to what I drew, to what they had, which wasn't even released to the public or any of that nature. That's so cool. how would someone at 19, 20 years old, 21 years old, would know that information unless it truly came from that spirit that I was communicating with. So I started getting information more this, and people don't think like, it's not like a 30 minute, an hour session. I solve a case or like that. Again, I don't solve cases. You don't just show up and we're done. Well, and I'm going to tell you a funny story about that because relating to this case is that it literally took about a six month, nine month period to work over time doing it. So it wasn't just a one reading type of thing. It takes time to do it. And during that time frame, giving the color of the car, I told them where the location I'm set. I've seen him and, in a ravine and, and underwater and this and that. Wow. It wasn't until like maybe a couple years later um, that they did find his body in um, a ditch of water. And when they drained the water, his car was in there, his windows were up and his body was still preserved. Yeah, and that's how that happened, yeah. But that was years down the road. That's nothing that I, I take credit for because that's nothing to do with me. The detectives yeah. did their work, did the work. And, it, and they did the thing. I only give the impressions of what I got. I can tell you one of the detectives in, in the city not going to name the department, but um, he said, hey, can you, can you just uh, come up in the helicopter with us and just let us know where the body's at? I'm like, it doesn't work that way. I can go, <laughs> I hey, it's right ask. there. It's yeah. not one of those things that you <laughs> yeah, can yeah, turn yeah. on and off. <laughs> it think, doesn't work that way. Yeah, it, it, it's it's so crazy because I think, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm human, just like everyone else. And then yeah. people, when they see me at a grocery store and this and that, they think I'm always, quote, unquote, like, turned on where I'm always yeah. seeing spirits and reading for people yeah. and this and that. It doesn't work like that. Like, I'm just like everyone else. I clock in and clock out for a job. It's the same thing. So there's a right place and a wrong place. You don't want to do it at a wrong place because, one, you don't know the state of mind of where that person is emotionally. You don't know if they even want to hear from that spirit. And, three, you don't even know if that's something that they're going to be very offended by. So you have to respect their privacy and their energy. You have to, one, you have to be open-minded, right? And then, two, you have to, I mean, I, I feel like, for the people listening, like we all have gone through losses in our life or yeah. certain thing where we just never got that answer to or right. a answer of like, yo, like what happened? Yeah. Or, hey, I just want to talk to you. I miss you. I love you. Yeah. But, you know, I love that you said that you don't just walk around and be like, game on. Right, right. <laughs> like I'm going to walk around, go to a restaurant and be like, wait, let me tell you something. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think the funny part about that is that, again, you see certain shows on television yeah. where you see 
these movies, mediums, yeah. movies, mediums that are, yeah. you know, doing the man on the street and they're reading for people in a grocery store on the, on the street and this and that. And if some people say they can't turn it off, we, you can control it. You can turn it on and off. And I don't know if it's part of a gimmick or if it's part of this and that, but it's someone, you know, I do believe you can control it because I control my work. I know when I to do it. I yeah. turn on, I turn off when I'm doing the work. Yeah. And so when I literally walk off stage and doing my, my events, I literally shut down immediately. So when I do meet and greets and stuff like that with people, I'm not on, I'm not reading for people. And I let them know, yeah. like, I'm. But that I'm, also allows yeah. you to live a normal, normal life. Yeah. Normal life. Yeah. yeah. You know, have relationships, friendships, eat lunch, right. regular, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Be, that's tough. Imagine. Well, you, well, you know, I think the best thing about some, like, I, I, I can honestly say, like, I have a handful of friends, like, true friends that I've had. And uh, two, three of them that I know that I've known for, like, over about 22 years, um, friendship. And it was just more of, like, the friendship happened was more at a work environment. Like, I met yeah. them, like, many, many years ago. Um, and they, I'll take you a backtrack. So I used to work at Sears and Roebuck in Whittier yeah. and downtown Whittier. This yeah, is when yeah. I, so I was there. I was on the radio at the same time. So yeah. people would joke around during that time frame, buy a treadmill, get a reading with AJ because I was I would do reading. And so basically, you do it, though? Yeah, I would do it because I did not know really the the control over the ability of how to do yeah. the work. And so the more I started controlling, grounding and protecting myself, the better that I got with the ability and the better I got with them um, being respectful and delivering the information. But I, I think it's just being respectful again to everyone's privacy in the process of doing this work. Wow. <laughs> right? How do you follow up? How do you follow up? It's like, damn. No, it's because process. it is. There is events. There is your regular life. There is people that seek help and seek for you to help them. So it's just like you're trying to you're trying to use your gift to help others, but people expect you. Again, maybe just the misinformation that we get from TV, that we get from movies, that we get from social media. I say social media is one of them for social sure. Social media yeah. is, is yeah. the fastest and the most inform, informative, it, it, and it doesn't need to be right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just it has to be put in a video and, and sent out, and yeah. it's just like, oh, I seen it there, so it has to be right. But, yeah. I mean, even with me, like when I started, like I, I was. I'm still very private with my life, you know, even on social media and this and that family. I don't post family photos and yeah. my wife and like very rarely we post stuff like that. I'm just a yeah. private person. Um, part of that process was, was still me being, quote unquote, a public figure, which I don't see myself as that, but yeah. other people do. And yeah. I just again, I'm, I'm a normal person. So when I first started doing like reels and TikToks and this and that. I said, I'm not going to get on TikTok. I'm not going to do it and this and that. And uh, my wife kept encouraging me for like a year and I said, yeah, all right, I'll get on it. Started doing it. And then vir videos just started going viral and this and that and readings and this and that. And I'm like, oh, maybe there's something to it. You know what I mean? So yeah. then even with Instagram, I started doing my almost, I would say about 90% of my reels and, and my TikTok videos are all educating people about how to connect with your loved ones, advice, yeah. awareness, educating people, because I want people to have the understanding. I'm not a TikTok psychic. I'm not an Instagram psychic. I've been doing this work for 22 years. Yeah. So when people say, oh, he's he's blew up overnight and this and that, like, I've been doing this work for 22 years, guys. I go, I've got not one of these, been doing this you know, before social, social media. media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just it. There's people that have been doing their craft of work or their line of work for years before the platforms that we have now. But just now there's a way for the world to see it. You know, oh, yeah. we post a video and then the East Coast is going to see it. Yeah. Or someone in another country is going to see it. Yep. How do we get there? Well, there's there's these tools. Yeah. If you have a business, use it. Like, use these 100%. free tools. But I, I love that about your content. I did notice that, like, when you go on there, you give people the information of right. your readings and how things usually happen. So instead of getting that misinformation of, Right. I'm gonna walk down the street. I'm just gonna read that person right away. Right. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it, it I, does for great content. I'm yeah. pretty sure, but no, it, it's it's good. I mean, because like again, there's so much um, misformed information out there. I, I want to try to do my best to help people and give the best advice. And but you know, everyone has their own opinion doing this work. Everyone has their own interpretation. Every medium, yeah. every psychic. So <laughs> it's not like we went to some Harry Potter school and learned everything. You know what I mean? Well, we all learn <laughs> the same stuff. You know what I mean? But it's definitely there. There is like education in, in schools and so on and so forth like the arthur finley college and that's i think in the in the uk if i'm not mistaken but some mediums go there most mediums go there for you know learning and so on and so forth but i think if you have reputation um doing the work but also 
um, ethics doing the work is the most important thing because I think like if you don't have ethics then it's kind of like you're not being respectful to not only the client spirit but also yourself. You mentioned earlier that you do things and you your gift uh, you express it through God, right? Yeah. Is there people that don't necessarily follow that route and maybe tap into evil spirits? I mean, I <laughs> I fear more of the physical, like people in the living than the dead, to be quite frank. <laughs> okay, okay. Why is that though? <laughs> yeah, um, because uh, the physical, um, people in the physical can hurt me. They can harm me. Those in spirit have never harmed me. They never did anything wrong to me. I've never felt anything evil or negative. Um, but if you are going to somehow do like an investigation, a paranormal investigation, yeah. which I have done many for businesses, locations, and so on and so forth, where you provoke it's because of what you're asking for. You're provoking a spirit. You're like, you're, you're persisting. You're, you're asking, like insisting and saying like, Hey, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And you're asking for certain things that you really don't want. And then they happen. Yeah. So that would we call like some sort of entity an energy, not an entity like the movie, but mm -hmm. an energy. And I think if you involve yourself with that negativity, dark vibration, dark energy, you're going to connect with that. It's just like, you know, what, what's the saying? Um, the people that you hang around with are kind of like the people that are going to be part of you. So if you're hanging yeah. around with people that are, you know, involved with this or that or blah, 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 whatever you want to call it, you're going to vibrate with that lower vibration. If I'm going to vibrate on a higher vibration, I'm going to surround myself with people that are in a positive light and positive vibration. And that's what I still do to this day. So I had to remove a lot of people in my life. Um, a lot of them were taking advantage of me um, for the wrong reasons and so on and so forth. And I realized that over time. So I had to kind of really cut ties. And, and those people that are still there with me are because still part of my life and they still respect me and um they they don't bother me they don't ask me you know about my work and this and that like they, when it's me it's like me it's and you. them yeah i mean i had a person yeah, yeah i had a yeah. friend of my a friend of mine still and i just found out um two weeks ago her father passed away she never mentioned anything to me never said anything and this and that and she goes oh yeah just casual and her grand and even prior to that her grandmother but she never asked for like a reading a message or this and that like she always felt like if it was going to happen, it was going to happen yeah. organically. Yeah. And I, and I respect that even to her to this day. And, uh, and I think when you have people like that in your life that are not there saying, give me, what can I get from you? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the people you want. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, you must believe, right? right, right. You must believe just <laughs> yeah. a little bit. You must believe enough. But do you, do you think that it's just hard for some people to comprehend or don't want to, because it's like, you know, it's a uh, easy topic of, do you believe in ghosts? Right. And it's some people like, no, I don't. And so I'm like, no, I really do. Right. But again, it's just the open mind, the open mindset of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, again, we've lost, some people have lost family members and it's like, oh, give me a sign. And then I see, right. we see X, a certain, y, Z. yeah, X, yep. Y, and Z happen. And I'm like, yep. there it is. Yep. That's all I needed. Yeah. Or there's a certain event that happens like, all right, that's all I needed. Yeah. And, I'm, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, sir, you know, people's, you know, sit in front of me, obviously, to bridge a connection, to get the closure, the hope, the healing. Um, and, I, and I use closure loosely because I don't think we ever really get closure. Right. I think it's more of the healing that we get out of it because, you know, closure, what's closure? We're ending a chapter to something. So we don't want to end that chapter to our loved one. We don't want to end that chapter to that relationship. We want to keep that door open of communication with yeah, them. So we want that healing. So people have these moments with me where they, or with any medium, where they want that medium to tell them, that one thing, if that one thing does not come through, it doesn't validate the experience of my loved one. And even though you can provide evidence, of names, dates, birthdays, funny moments, personal moments, but if you don't mention that one thing in the reading, it's not valid for them. So sometimes mm. people sit in front of you for that as we're talking a little bit yeah, I mean, about it. Yeah, of course, uh, I guess a misconception or it may be a misconception. It could be true. I don't know. Um, can you always communicate with the person that let's say I want to communicate with, or let's say I want to communicate right. with a specific person. Is that possible? Or are there times where somebody else may step in? Yeah, quite often, um, every, every person, no matter who I speak with, no matter where they're located in the world, they all have that VIP person that they absolutely positively want to hear from. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they come through, sometimes they don't. A medium does not have any control who or what comes through. If any medium that you guys speak with or talk to or find on social media or however that looks like to, to anyone listening or, yeah. or watching, um, psychic beware. 
because if they can guarantee you that I can for sure connect you with your dad, your mom, or that specific loved one, yeah. it's kind of like a beware sign because they might be fishing for something that they have the bad or ill intentions, or they might be looking for other things that are not really connected to you. So it's of something course. that you guys should be aware or anyone should be aware about is like the connection that you want with your loved ones is really just being open and receptive. Go in there with an open mind, open intention, regardless if it's a person you want to hear from or not. If, if it's their way coming through spirit, they're doing their job, regardless if it's who you want to hear from or not. Yeah. You mentioned you were, you're married. Yeah. How did that come about? So my wife, she worked for me, um, not for me, but she did free, a lot of freelance writing. So I ended up hiring her to do some PR work for me. Mm -hmm. And so she does a lot of PR writing, producing, even podcast stuff as well. Nice. And, uh, she ended up uh, doing, you know, some press releases and press kits and this and that. And, and prior to that, we used to do like family dinner, like every Sunday and this and that. I would go to her parents' house and so on and so forth. But it was always something casual. We both came up, both came out of like toxic relationships. It was just bad where we were at. So it wasn't a place that either one of us were looking to even date. I don't think we even thought about even dating each other. It just, again, happened organically. And it's yeah. the best way I can say it. It was like at the point where it was just like, huh, I think I like her, you know, or, yeah. you know, it was kind of a feeling and not knowing if that was going to happen that way. It just happened the way it needed to. And I, God, we've been married now. This year will be 10 years, but we've known each other for, I think, over 18 years. Yeah. Oh, so it's been a yeah. while. Yeah, it's been a while. Been a while. <laughs> I think that was just a question because of your line of work that she already knew what you were doing. So it's like. Well, she didn't believe it either. She didn't believe the work. She was skeptical. She said, I'm an employee. I'm coming to work. And look, she didn't see that coming. Right. <laughs> Wow. No, yeah, she was. She didn't believe it really. I mean, she wasn't really into it or didn't believe in it. But I mean, but she has a good um, spirituality, faith, religion, all that stuff. Um, she's pretty damn intuitive as well, you know, as women are naturally. But women are pretty damn intuitive. Again, you vibrate with someone, you hang out with someone right. that does the work itself. Yeah. You're gonna pick up a ball of that information as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Congratulations, <laughs> being married ten years. Yeah, yeah, it's an accomplishment. It's very, very much an accomplishment. <laughs> Damn, these days it's yeah. like two years max yeah yeah i mean you gotta you gotta think of it i think it's just keeping the privacy is the main thing yeah. um because i'm not like and, and don't take this and anyone that's listening or watching or even you guys i'm not, I, I don't know what your lifestyle is like but i'm not a person that's out there posting everything that i'm eating everything that i'm doing everywhere that i'm at or this where i'm going and like yeah. i keep things very private even my wife my family and so on and so forth so it's part of those things if i do post things it's usually because i already went there and I'm gone and it happened a couple of days ago is what I do because I want people to know where I'm at. I don't want people like, you <laughs> I know, think we're similar in that sense. Where yeah. we'll post. I mean, there's times where we do post in the moment. Right. But there's other times where it's like, I'm gonna I get it for it the now, stories. It happened, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like two yeah. days ago. But yeah. It's, it's part of that. It's though. dabbling into the whole content creating, right? Being, yeah. being a, an influence, right? There's a difference <laughs> between being an influencer and an influence. Like, right. <laughs> I just want to, I want to show people what I do, where I'm at. Hey, maybe you can come here and enjoy this the way I do. Right. Yep. But again, I may post it a couple of days later <laughs> yeah. or a couple of hours later <laughs> for that same reason, because I, yeah. I do love what you said. Like you don't post, you know, your family, uh, your wife, because there's certain things to keep private. Yeah. And it's not because I don't want to show them off, but right. it's like, well, I need to protect them. Yeah. Because if everybody knows who I am, but they don't know that life or they don't know if someone has right. an ill intention against me. Yep. But mm -hmm. they see them and it's like, well, I can't get to them, but I'll get to you. Oh, yeah. So it it has its pros and cons. Oh, right? absolutely. I mean, like a lot of people would go through my wife to get to me. Like and people and people, some followers would go to her, they would research her and try to find out who she is and this and that, but they would contact the, the wrong Jennifer, which, which is a colleague, a friend of mine thinking it was yeah. my wife. And yeah. they go like, Oh, and so we always like joke around, like not that Jennifer, the other Jennifer, you know what I mean? But yeah. it, it's funny because like, again, people do it for the wrong reasons. They, they're only doing it to benefit themselves. Yeah. Of course. Why they would reach out to say a brother, a sister or whatever for, yeah. for the wrong reasons. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm sure they they're hurting, they're in pain, they're grieving and so on and so forth. But yeah. You know, just do what everyone else does, you know, like, you know, go to a website or do this or do that or, you know, just, you know, be respectful. 
Be respectful with people's people, family. People Give them like privacy. The, people like the free things. Oh, yeah. People Tell like the, it. let Tell me, me get the it. VIP access. Tell me about it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> people I like know. the VIP access. It's just it, easier. I mean, it's not right, <laughs> yeah. but it's easier. But it's just but it's, what, what you said but right it's now. Cool when you're, it's cool when you're able to do it, though. Yeah, you know what I mean? Course. That's the, what I can do. When yeah. I can do it to people and say, like, hey, I'm at capacity at tickets, or I can't do it, or I can't do like, if I can do it, I'll, I'll give away tickets to yeah. people that want tickets. But, you know, but if I can do it, I can do it. Same thing. I get it. It's, it's nice. It's, like how you said right now, they they won't go to me, but they'll go through someone close to me. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. It's, it's not them. Right. Like, you yeah. Come to me or ask me, like, depending on our relationship. If our relationship is close, then I should be able to reach you when you have a chance. But oh, yeah. How you said, my real friends and my real loved ones that I have around, they don't see me as the person that is on social media. They see yeah. me as just me. Right. They don't ask for a post. They don't ask for a tag. They don't ask for get me here, get me there. <laughs> They're just like, yo, I see you doing good. That That's the main thing about it. I, I remember for, for years, because I, again, I don't post a lot of things. And I remember posting or someone posting a photo of me or I po- maybe I reshared it or something. It was me having a drink in my hand. People were like, oh my God, you drink? And people were like so offended and upset. <laughs> yeah, like, man, oh my God, I can't believe it. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I go, like, And you, people are very judgmental mm-hmm. in the spiritual world. Very judgmental. Like they say, you can't eat this food. You can't have red meat. You can't drink. You can't do it. Like you're going to hear so many different things and perceptions. And I'm like, I've been doing this for, for 22 years and I've been staying grounded to my work and to my craft. And as long as I kind of do that, it's the main thing. But yeah. I'm not over here indulging and getting See my language, shit faced, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say super drunk, but hey, shit faced work. Sorry, I don't know if I can even say nah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, because I believe when people get shit faced, they start seeing things. <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> Damn, we're all psychics and mediums all of a sudden. Bottle one, bottle of tequila down. <laughs> They're like, I oh, see man. three of you right there. <laughs> That's your oh. past, future, and present. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my what gosh. works for you works for you. Right. It works for me, has worked for me. Yeah. This is just my story. Yeah. And, and again, people are like, no, I've seen X, Y, and Z do it this way. Right. And it worked for them. Yeah. It's just, we're different. Yeah. I'm different. Yep. I'm just human. That's, yeah. Again, the I think the whole title to this whole well, the topic is, is like, bro, we're just people. We're just yeah. people that yeah. enjoy what we do. We love what we do. And we're able to do it at a high capacity because to do it for as long as you've been doing it, Right. You have to have some sort of passion, right. love, and attachment yeah. to it because why Why else would you do it for so long and do it with such a great energy and such a great uh, foundation that you have set already? 100%. I, I mean, the, the beautiful thing about the work, though, sad and beautiful, is that there's been times where, you know, again, I've been in this field for quite some time, and that's more that's me doing it professionally. Yeah. Like I, was been, I was doing readings and stuff even prior to that, junior high school and so on and so forth, but there's times where parents will tell, say their parents would have had a reading with me yeah. in person or whatever. The parents would tell their kids to make sure they seek out me once they go like on their deathbed and so on and so forth. And uh, their kids are then seeing me without me knowing that um, they told me like my mom or my dad or my sister or so and so told me that, Hey, go see AJ, you know, or, you know, I'm going to tell you like, who I'm gonna come. and right now it gets me emotional. It breaks my heart because like, when you hear that, it's just like people who are not believers in it, but they were, or people they feel like, you know, I'll try it out. And the information that comes through where someone's in a vegetative state of mind or has dementia or Alzheimer's and the actual evidential information comes through, which I should not know about, only between them and the person on their deathbed. Yeah. That's pretty damn amazing because it shows the unconditional love, the unconditional love and the bonds of love, but more importantly, how love does not die. Yeah. Has there been a reading that has has been in your mind that like to your heart, like that you've done in your line of work and over the years? God. There, there, honestly, there, there are so many. I mean, I've probably done over well over fifty thousand readings for sure. Easy, oh, wow. easy. Is there, is there one and that stands out? Too many. I mean, I can tell you one that sticks that sticks out to me because it was. So funny, uh, it was a reading that I did last week, and I will remember it because it was a, a family reading. It was done virtually. Every, all my readings are done virtually. I don't do in-person readings at all whatsoever unless you see me at a live show. But the reading that I did for the family, their mother was coming through, and she was kind of like a, a, a dancing machine, but she was still roasting everyone in the family from the afterlife throughout the whole reading and telling funny jokes and personal notes, even the son-in-law and, and 
this and that, like all these different people. And it just shows their personality, their sense of humor. They get to take that with them in the afterlife. Like you have, we have to think about this. Like when we die, we're energy, we're, we're energy. You know what I mean? So we don't have a physical body. So we don't have, you know, the, the arms and the legs and so on and so forth. Yeah. We're just energy. Yeah. But when they come through, they'll show themselves either at the age that they want to or the age that they died or so on and so forth. So this is why sometimes there's maybe some, you know, different interpretations, how people see spirit or hear them and so on and so forth. But yeah. I, I really believe that when spirit comes through, it's their way of just doing their job for the person or giving the message across to the right person. Um, regardless if it's, it's, if it's like how they need to present themselves to us. You know what I mean? You said you've been doing this for a while. Has there ever been just a moment in time where one of the readings was too much that just maybe made you want to stop altogether? Uh, I can't share that one on air. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, because it involves legal. Oh, of course. Oh. <laughs> so but it has many, been a, yeah, it, has it, been it a happened many, many years ago when, when I first started my career. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was some. There's been a couple of things that have made you. Yeah, that was basically it was it was a um, a murder case, mm. and I was at a young age, okay. not knowing. And basically, in short, um, the next day after that reading, I had to get security cameras around my home and everything just to protect myself. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah. Not crazy, huh? So yeah. Your life, your life can be from helping people to also being a collateral to something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes people get upset because, like, you know, I tell them the wrong thing or it's not what they want to hear. Like, people sit in front of me because sometimes they, majority of the time, they want to hear what they want to hear. Yeah. yeah. I tell them what they need to hear, regardless of if it's good, bad, and ugly. I let them know, like, there's no filter on me. Um, I'm not the rainbows and butterflies and unicorns type of, re of reading. Yeah, of uh, you may get stuff that is so blunt, so harsh, and you may get the, you know, the softer side of, you know, seers like me, you know what I mean? You yeah. might get that side of me, but it really depends. You might get the humor side. It just really depends on your energy, your loved ones, and how they're going to communicate. Yeah, no, I feel that. I mean, that just goes hand in hand now. Like, yeah. I just tell me what I want to hear. Right. Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me the truth. Don't tell me <laughs> what you think. I'm, no, no, no. Just tell me what I want to hear because some people just don't know how to handle the truth or right. how to accept it. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's I mean, thing, accepting, right? Like, accepting and fear. I think they're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of what may not happen or what will happen. And it's either one of those situations. So if we're talking about will a loved one come through, will they not come through? Will I be success successful in my career? Won't I be? Will I be? Like, there, there's, uh, there's all these doubts and questions. So it just really depends yeah. on uh, how open and receptive you are to all the information. Again, good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah, no, that's... Oh, being, yeah. being open to that, bro. <laughs> Just being open. Right? We, I don't even want to know. I want to know what's happening next week. But at the same time, it's like, nah. Like I go day by day to see yeah. how things go. Like yep. I don't know what today brings, and I'm excited for it. Yeah, I, I, I don't. You know, I don't ever do any like psychic readings or stuff like that. Even for myself, it's more like, if anything, mediumship, like connected with loved ones and stuff like that. I'm just like everyone else. I, I experience loss and so on and so forth, and. I grieve and we all grieve differently. And I always, you know, very blunt about it. I talk about it a lot on social media, like about the grieving process, you know, it's, um, what, yeah. What's it's, your thought on the grieving process? Um, it's a beast, you know, um, grief is not, um, a sprint. It's a marathon. It's going to take time to get through it. So when you're ready to release and heal your heart in that time, that's your way of doing it. No one can tell you how to grieve. No one. It's only your journey and your, and how you reach that destination is up to you. Love that. <laughs> no, no. It, because, again, it's it's an answer we all try to find. Yeah. I, I, I think we, we look for it in, in, the, in all the wrong ways. Um, mm -hmm. and, and forgive me if this is going to come off offensive or maybe the wrong way, but it could be through drugs, alcohol, many different uh, forms, um, going out, neglecting, um, many different things. And that yeah. could affect, obviously, the, the mental health situation yeah. where you kind of, like, go inwards and – you stay home and so on and so forth. And, and that's something that I think we need to be vocal about. We need to talk more about it, even especially the men in the work, the men that are going through it. Men feel like that they cannot express their emotions in the way that they need to because they're taught to be, you know, especially Latin culture, Hispanic culture, to be machismo and be this way and be that way and so on and so forth. And you recognize like, oh man, like, you know, I really miss my, this loved one. I really miss this person. It's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's a normal human condition. Yeah. yeah, and we find it easier when, how you said, when we're in using those substances, whether biggest one is alcohol. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And drinking alcohol, and when we're drunk, that's when all these emotions start coming in. Yeah. And mm -hmm. 
you start missing certain people, whether yeah. you lost them physically or just relationship wise and not the best decisions come out and that's maybe not the best state of mind to do it. But Hey, like if this is happening now, that's why I always tell people like, there's always three people that are always going to tell you the truth. Someone that's drunk, someone that's mad and a little kid. So it's just like, if you told that's me this true. while you were drunk, I know you feel this way. Just you can tell me when we're so you really feel this exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. But tell it's easier me. to put the blame on just a substance. Yeah, sorry, yeah. man. I was, that's I'm why sorry. I called I you at 3 in the morning. It. I did I not mean, mean it. <laughs> it was an alcohol talking. Sorry. Oh, I called you at 3 in the morning on accident. Yeah. You, you, you were oh, saying it with your chest. You were saying it with your chest. Like, what happened? Oh, man. Yeah, no, it's it's grieving. That's Because um, I think grieving also comes in different parts, right? From losing a loved one or just losing who you once were. Yeah, like a per like your own personal mm -hmm. like. What's that? Um, not a character death. Ah, oh, brain fart. But yeah, it's just going through change. Like I'm going through this depression uh, moment right now because I'm, I'm not that person anymore. So yeah. it's like maybe it's getting out of the relationship, and the one that person you were when you're with them, it's not who you are now. Right. You got to deal with that loss. Like, man, I used to be happy. Yeah. What happened to that person? It's like. And that's part of grief. Grief can be, you know, losing a relationship, losing a job. It could be many different things. It's not just losing a loved one. Yeah. It's how we all grieve. I mean, even I have more people, you know, grieve over their own animals, their dog, their cat, their birds, rather than their own loved ones. And it's, an, and it's a normal thing. I mean, I literally just posted a video of me doing one of my live shows where this three-legged dog came through in a reading and I'm telling the story like, Oh, like no one's going to admit to this. Sure enough, the person in the very back audience said, Hey, I lost my puppy who had, which had three legs. So again, like That's stuff like that. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting how, how, you know, those things come through those animals because they're part of our life. It's really part of our life. Yeah. So yeah. grief is it, grief is grief. I mean, however you want it. Like, you know, there's people that tell me like, Hey, I never really lost anyone close to me. Like, can you connect me with my pet or my dog or my cat? And I'm very clear with people. I am not an animal communicator. Like I'm not because there are people that are actually animal communicators in the field that actually really? talk with wow. animals. So I can bring through animals, birds, dogs, cats, whatever that person may have had. Um, I even had a, a lady I was on tour. I was doing a show in Virginia and there was a lady in the audience and I said, hey, I got someone's monkey that's coming through. And everyone in the audience is like laughing. Like, ah, I'm like, no, no seriously, I got someone's monkey that's coming through. It's a small monkey, da, da, da. And I'm start going on with the information. I said, hey, this is a monkey that someone actually had to physically like put down. This is not an accident. This is not like someone working in a zoo. And a lady probably, I think, like maybe the fifth or sixth row, uh, she stands up. She lost her capuchin and she had to put it down. Yeah. So, again, there, yeah. Damn. So, <laughs> crazy you really don't know what comes through right, right, yeah <laughs> it's like surprise yeah it is it's it truly again like before we got on you know started doing the show expect the unexpected with me yeah Almost expect definitely. the unexpected yeah have do you have a clear definition of happiness oh my god um i i don't i don't i i think for me is what truly just makes my heart smile what just makes me happy is what i can say because my happiness, my definition of happiness will never be the same experience or feelings what you would have. I mean, happiness for me could be just being with my wife and my dogs. Honestly, that could be something so simple. Money doesn't represent anything to me. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's part of anyone's uh, livelihood, yeah. part of what they need to do, but it's not, it doesn't identify who I am. It doesn't, my happiness is really being with family, friends, animals. I'm an animal lover. So um, I think happiness for me is just what makes my heart smell. Yeah. Food. You're in tune with yourself. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I know when things are off. I know when things are off with friends. So I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> and uh, I was going to call you, you know, to let you know about the podcast. And then, but you end up texting me that day, like, hey, yeah. are we still on? But it's funny because a lot of my friends won't answer my phone call because they're afraid I'm going to have bad news. So they don't answer oh, my phone call. Okay. So they wait for a voicemail or they wait for me to follow up with a text. If I don't send a text, they're like, oh, okay, he, he, we're good, we're good. Yeah. But yeah, so you end up texting me. I'm like, oh, thank God, because most people, if they freak out about it, they think I'm going to bring bad news. But there are times where I call friends and I say, hey, like, are you pregnant or is this going on? They're like, oh, my God, I haven't told my boyfriend or I haven't you told my tell. wife. Or, but yeah, I was like, yeah. you know, even with my own family, I knew my sister was pregnant before she even announced it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
I feel you. The same. <laughs> I could tell when my sister was pregnant the three times. I was like, "You're pregnant." She's like, "No, I'm not." I'm like, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And then lo and behold, like I was the last one to find out. I was the first you were, one. To yeah, know, I'm like, "You're pregnant." Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's part of intuition. Again, it's an ability yeah. that we all have. And I think we just recognize it in a completely different way. But it, it's super cool. Like when we do recognize those little moments, that's intuition. That, same yeah. thing with what I'm doing. It may not be mediumship connecting with loved ones, but it's energy that you're picking up. Yeah. Feed off energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We all do. It's, we all it's do. simple. Read the room, right? Read right. the room. Read the conversation. Read the person. You know when someone's not on... On the vibes are off. On the vibes are off. <laughs> the vibes or, are not vibing. Anymore. You know, even right. as simple as going to a restaurant, a store, or hey, how you doing? Right. They look at you like, bro, don't ask me. Yeah. I'm like, bro, look at you, man. I'm, I'm laughing about it because that's something my wife always tells me. She goes, AJ, read the room. Like, because, like, I'm all peppy and happy and this and that and blah, blah. And I'm like, like she no. goes, like, she's like, why are you so happy and peppy and this and that? I go, like, yeah. I go, ah, no, I'm just happy. It's a good morning. You know, this and that. Like, I'm she alive. Like, yeah. I'm good. She goes, yeah. read the room. It's too early for your shit. You know? <laughs> it's like, you know what? I wasn't, I wasn't on. Right. I wasn't on. It's not a good morning right now. Okay? No, it's. It, oh, my gosh. It definitely happens. You know, and everybody has their own emotions and they're very much entitled to it but we always say other people are not the collateral damage to your bad day right you know they didn't do nothing to you yeah. and it's just you can have a bad moment or a bad day you choose it yeah give yourself a couple of hours a, a couple of minutes but don't don't let one bad moment just ruin the rest of your week the rest of your day the rest of your month the rest of your year yeah because yeah. again day by day shit can change yeah hour uh -huh. by hour things yep. can change so it's like how, how are you going to carry yourself? What's your, uh, when you when you have a bad start to your morning, how, how do you carry yourself? What How do you determine what the rest of your day looks like? I mean, before I even get out of bed, I meditate and pray, even when I'm not even working with clients. So Sundays is always like my day for me and my wife. You know, it could be something very simple as just lounging around, having coffee, then yeah. barbecuing in the evening, you know, doing something, cooking dinner. But so, for me, it, it's it's simplicity of things. So, that's kind of like my main thing. Like for me, it's like, I don't think about a bad day or a bad energy because it's like, then I'm already creating that for that day. Yeah. So okay. kind of think of it like, like, like social media, basically. Like if you kind of put out there, like to everyone, like on social media, like, Oh guys, I'm having a bad day and blah, blah. And a thousand people watch it. That's 10,000 people sending that bad energy right back to you and supporting that bad energy. So you don't want right. to do that stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I think the power of, social media when people put like their sadness or grief and so on and so forth yes we get support yes we get you know the uplifting words but again if you're putting that negative energy into something starting your day yeah then you're allowing that those people that are liking the bad energy post that's it. gonna affect your energy mm -hmm. yeah so so only post positive things <laughs> moving forward because jesus christ we need the positivity give us all the likes people got it for a while on, on i think on i don't know which social media page but for a while i ended up having all like positive like things that i followed yeah. and everything because i didn't follow a lot of people and i had all the positive stuff sorry no no you're good you're good yeah having all the, like the positive stuff uh on my page because i didn't just want to see like everyone's drama and stuff like that and then afterwards i started gradually people back and started like removing people like people that yeah. have like posted way too much about like Deep oh my TV. yeah it was just like oh my god even for me it was too much because yeah. i feel overwhelmed it's because big. i yeah i'm an empath and i yeah. pick up that emotion that energy yeah. and sometimes i want to reach out to people and then there's people that call me um that reach out to me or this and that that are very draining emotionally yeah. but i'm yeah. there for them i'm supportive but after i get off the, the phone call as a casual casual conversation nothing psychic nothing medium just yeah. human to human interaction yeah. After I got the phone, I'm like, oh, my God, like <sighs> mentally, exhausted. like exhausted. Yeah. yeah. I feel sick. Yeah. I need so a drink. I, I, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Give me a Cheetos and soda, man. <laughs> but you can. You can. It alters, it alters your mind. Shit. Yeah. Uh, and, and it ruins relationships at the same time when someone that you love or trust use something against you that yeah. you can find in them. And yeah. it's like. It's honesty. Yeah. I was like, it's, wait, I. I can find it in you. Now you're going to throw it in my face. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So that now, hurts more. Yeah. I'm like, this is where we're at now. Yeah. People well, it's, using your own hurt against you is crazy. Yeah, that's it, the next level type of hurt. Yeah. Well, that's part of their own energy, their own yeah. karma, part of that process. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. when that does happen, it's it's what they deserve right back to them. I mean, I, I think people just need to be respectful, again, of everyone's energy and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. That's like the main thing. Well, yeah. we're, right. 
off the of camera when we were talking, um, you know, the video of me talking about dreaming with my uncle and trying to get a message through him and a little reminder through him is the one that reached you and why we're here because it's one of the, again, it, it's people that, there's a lot of people like myself that are, are very emotional and like my guy here. I show we're, myself off. We're <laughs> very, we're very emotional and probably mo more than others, especially in our household, because one, either we show it, we shut down or we get in our own mind of like, oh, man, I miss this person. What did yep. I do? I'm missing this. I'm missing that. This is going wrong. And yeah, I mean, I mean with that and my uncle, I mean, this happened in 2015. So again, answers I never which got. Is, which is some, I mean, I still, I would still call that still pretty recent passing, even though it's 15. Yeah. Again, everyone navigates grief differently. So for me, my grand, I did not grieve my grandfather's passing till three years after he passed. So that's when I started my grieving process. I never accepted his past. I understood he passed, but yeah, I never accepted it. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier, I went through the rabbit hole of self-destruction. Yeah. I'm going to drink. I'm going to go out. I'm going to party. Sleep apnea is horrible. Mm -hmm. Everything happened. Yep. And it's always like, I'm up for, you want, you want some water? Oh, please. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bro. I, I don't know how you guys knew that, but. That was weird. Did you tell him? Yeah. Okay, because I <laughs> reached over. I was like, I thought I brought my water bottle. That's why. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where it's just like, just a rabbit hole. Like, there's a time that I usually get up or that I, I'll stay awake until a certain time. Because, again, it's a reference of I got a call at 1.30 in the morning. So my usual time of going to sleep, and they know it's like over 1.30, 2 o'clock. And mm -hmm. I'm like sitting there. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah, I mean, it was tough. Like e even my, my grandfather, my dad's dad passed like uh, in September, September, sorry, not September, um, February, like a couple months ago. So I was at the hospital there with my dad and his sister and he was just like coughing up blood and like, they said it was like chocolate pudding that they fed him and this and that. And I'm like, no, and I said, I think that's blood. He kept on coughing up for like an hour mm -hmm. we're there. Oh. And, uh, you know, I, I feel bad because, like, during the time frame, like, they said, okay, like, you know, told my dad, said, hey, to his sister, like, just go home. He'll be fine, this and that. A couple hours later, he died that night, you know. So it was kind of like one of those moments that I think she felt guilty. But I think, you know, my Aunt Bridget, I think she did everything she possibly can for him. Like, give him the best life, the best support, the best medical yeah. that she can do. But when you have that loss, even for my dad, my dad, you know, talked about certain things, um, between their relationship, his dad and him and this and that. And, um, again, we all grieve, yeah. we all grieve and we all grieve in a different manner. Yeah. So you were mentioning something about, uh, being in tune, being emotional in your family. Yeah. Um, for those people that are the more emotional in their families, what's, what's a power that they have that they may just not understand. Oh my God. Um, I, I can't save the world. You know what I mean? I, I can't fix everyone. I, I can't fix them. I, I, mean, I, think that, I think a lot of people, you know, come to me as obviously for help, but I don't want people to come to me as a Band-Aid because all people want immediately when they jump to a medium is they put a Band-Aid over their heart saying, hey, I'm content, I'm good, I'm okay, like all that stuff. Yeah. But really, they haven't really accepted, they haven't gone through the grieving process and so on and so forth. So I don't want to just be a Band-Aid in someone's life. I want to assist them. I want to help them heal. I want to help them grow. And if I can do that, I think I'm doing my job for sure. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. How, do you, how, do you, how do you follow up? You, you, yeah. Don't. <laughs> you don't. You can. It, it's, you don't. You can. It's, it's a very, it's a special conversation. It is. It's very informative. It's again, it's for people to understand. You know, there's people like yourself out there that are very genuinely want to help, and is that that middle for everybody. But again, it's you're helping others, but you also have to help yourself out. Yeah. So the selfishness does come in at one point, and have you? learned or have you seen yourself you mentioned earlier about choosing people around you right at what point do you put yourself first 
or do you even put yourself first when doing this type of work? Um, I don't think I ever really put myself first when I'm doing the work um, because it's not about me. It's about the client. It's about yeah. spirit. It's about the healing that they receive. Yeah. Um, I come first after my job, after my work is done. And uh, I, I said to myself for this year, like, I'm going to be a little bit selfish this year. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to be 40 this year. I'm like, I don't celebrate my birthday. I don't really go. I mean, I, I'll go out and have dinner or whatever, like a simple dinner. Yeah. Um, but I don't celebrate. I don't do any of that stuff. I don't do anything special. I don't do. Any, so this year I said, you know what? I'm going to celebrate myself this year. I'm going to do something good for myself and focus on things and do things that make me happy and, and take more time off from, you know, giving myself to the role because I'm always working with clients. I'm always not, I don't have the time to hang out with my friends. I don't have time to see my family as often as I would like to. Like there's a lot of things that I need to put first, which is myself. And I'm starting doing this year for 2024 is that it's about me this time. You know, I, I love what I do, but I need to take care of myself because if I'm not taking care of the vehicle, then the vehicle is not going to run the same way. Yeah. Get him. That's facts right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we're all in that stage where yeah. it's selfish season, you called it, right? Yeah. Because we, we had a, we did a, like a mini question slash game that we did uh, like a, last week, me and him. And one of the questions was, if you can name this season of your life, what would you call it? Can you stop right there? Yeah. Can I ask you something? Oh, yes. So I obviously see you wearing that shirt, hmm. but do you actually have a dog passed on like that? Okay, I'm seeing that wrinkly face on on the dog that we need to bring up here, and I don't know if it passed on recently or many years ago, but as soon as he walked in, I'm like, oh shit, it is him, because when he walked out that way, I felt it come back this way, and so when he walked in again, I'm like, oh, it is him. So that's why I thought it was I thought it was one of you guys, but I'm like, mm, not them. No. But yeah, I don't know if you lost it. I'm um, sorry. Oh. <laughs> He'll always follow me. Yeah, he's he's still following you. Honestly, this is why he's coming through because literally I have goosebumps like literally yeah, running same. through my body right now. So I just like he's still part of your life when he comes through. What's interesting, I don't know much about the the pug breed at all whatsoever, but except for they have that, yeah. Right, yeah, face. But it's interesting because like I don't know if I need to make fun of you or you make fun of the dog quite often. Um, do I do pugs have like a lot of difficulties with their with their health? Would, would you excuse my language? But did you call him like fat ass all the time? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I you're. Always, like, I always just call him like a cute ugly. Okay. He's ugly, but obviously so ugly. He's cute. He wants to let you know he's still cute, ugly dog in the afterlife <laughs> when it comes through. Honestly, because I feel like he wants to like tease you or thank you for of, like terms of endearment of the funny, weird name in the way that it comes through. Because I just feel like you need to make sure that you know that you did everything in your physical life to provide for that dog because your your dog was your BFF. He was your body because I feel like that in those moments that he did follow you, like he was truly that shadow. And I just feel like that you still can sense him, but I don't think it's all the time, but you know when he's around you, it's that feeling of like, oh my God, like this is different. You know it feels different. So I just feel like that it's part of their way recognizing this. I am going to bring something up here with, with the dog itself and I might misinterpret this, but... I don't know if that dog passed on recently or many years ago and you don't have to tell me because I don't want to be influenced by that. But would you have actually like, would you have actually like um, done something very unique with its collar that we need to talk about? It's collar? Like say, like, you know how they have like tags and stuff like yeah, them on it? I still have it saved, but like, I feel like I feel so shitty now. But I just don't know where it's at, but I okay. still have it saved. So I'm going to stop you right there. I feel like if they're bringing that up, like the tag specifically, rather than just the collar, there's something I'm hearing like the um, jingling type of thing, like tags hitting each other. Yeah. I believe that you are going to find the tags probably in a very unexpected way. So say for instance, you're cleaning your house or cleaning the garage and all of a sudden like, holy crap, like I did not know yeah. it was here. I feel like there might be a moment like that where you're not even looking for it, that it's going to present itself. When that moment happens, that is your dog's way of saying that their soul and spirit is with you in that very moment. Yeah, yeah, and the month and the month of December is connected to you or to the dog. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when I got him. Yeah, he just said I December. Yeah, December third. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what I do. Wow. <laughs> Shout out Jovi. Oh, <laughs> what, what's the dog's name? Jovi. Jovi. J O V I. Okay, I used to call uh, one of my other dogs. His name is Cujo. He's a miniature Schnauzer, but we call him Joni. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was like, oh, that's super cool. But just. Well, you know, because I, I do have a, a pit bull. Like, looks like this too. 
so. That's super cool. So I, I just feel like that your dog, like it's so bizarre because you were you standing here the whole time. I wasn't really looking this way. Okay. Yeah. I was like, is it him? Is it him? I'm like, I was like, mm, maybe not. But as soon as you left and I was like, okay, the energy shifted. It changed. It's not here. When you came. And as soon as I and saw, I, crazy. you see me on camera, like, yeah. yeah. It's crazy because I never, uh, like, they, they, they could vouch. Like, I never leave to go take calls or do something. Like, I need to do it now. And I just been going back and forth, right? Yeah. That's how, I think it's kind of a good thing because I recognize the shift in the energy in the room. So as soon as you walk back in, I'm like, okay, it's him. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh, he did say expect the unexpected. Yeah, and again, I, 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 like, it's, you know, it's so funny because I always joke around like I'm not animal communicator, but like it's I see things happen like a movie reel like very quickly, so I'm interpreting like when I look down or look off to the side, I'm really seeing images or flashes or I'm seeing things that make sense to me. So for me, anytime like. I see a certain symbol, it's always gonna mean the same thing for me. Like an example, like, you know, unfortunately when the whole pandemic happened, um, obviously a lot of people passed with pneumonia, you know, life they were on life support or, you know, they died of COVID and so on and so forth. And so during that time frame, um, even now to this day, anytime I see, I would say about 95% of the time when I do see a ventilator, I know that person died of COVID. So that's a new symbol that I learned yeah. over that time period. So I'm always learning new symbols, new references. Yeah. And sometimes there's references that don't make sense to me, but will make complete sense to the client. When the client says, oh, it makes complete sense to me, and they'll explain to me why, then that's how I became, uh, build that vocabulary yeah, yeah. for that symbol now. So anytime I see that symbol, that's what it'll always mean because of what they validated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dang. Dang. You're oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how we were saying earlier about like how we were like. Yeah. We were just talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we were literally, uh, we recorded a podcast prior to this. So we were talking about how we went to San Diego and it was around the time that his dog had just recently passed. So it's like he's seen all these pugs around and he's just like, damn. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's Dude, we're like, yeah, so that we're is like, a trip. Bro, we just finished talking about this. Well, I think, again, it's the intention that you set by speaking about it, by talking about it. This is why I always tell people to talk about your loved ones and embrace them. Um, they're listening. They're very much aware. Even though they don't have a physical body, it's their way of connecting with you in the way that they need to. And I think that's the beautiful part is that because you acknowledge that you gave it positive vibes and good energy and you're very well connected to that, that animal, that energy was obviously yeah, was still part of your life. Like, yep. Like, my emotions. Yeah. Well, ob obviously, because if he, obviously your dog came through, not a loved one. You know what I mean? Because it shows the compassion, the love. Yeah. That, again, love doesn't die. She yeah. just finished yeah. saying that. Yeah. How he's like, with people, he doesn't, he doesn't pour into them because he doesn't want to get close. Yeah. But the love that he gives his, his dogs is better than ours. Yeah, <laughs> the loyalty. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> you makes sense. Dog more than us. Got it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a you know beautiful thing. Even for, like, I don't know how well certain people know their families, you know, like their generation and so on and so forth. But even like for you, one of you guys, I don't even know who it's for, but even for one of you guys, because it feels like it's separate from him, mm -hmm. that there is a separate father figure, not an uncle figure to you or to you. It feels like it's going to be like, like a grandfather figure that we do need to bring up here. But I feel like it feels more maternal than paternal side. So did you guys know your mom's side of the family pretty well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you know your mom's father, both of you guys? Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know who it's for, but it's interesting because there is going to be a bridge or a parallel connection, not to the dog, but either with one of your mom's, your grandfather figure, there's something about like either about like the jingling of the keys or the shaking of the keys. There's something about the keys. Like, I don't know if he had like a big wad of keys all the time, or he always carried a big wad of keys. But there's something about that when you bring up either for you or for over here. So if it doesn't make sense here, it might be for you over here. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Abuelito de rancho. Huh? Abuelito de rancho. Yeah. Did he have like keys to everything? I don't even know, or if there's a very literal thing. But um, I don't know about like physical, but we've always said he's the one that kept us all together. So it's more of a he was the key to the house in our sense. Like 
home. But the, so here's the thing. Let me just give it to you because it might make sense to you in a different capacity. Because right. I always want to make sure I'm, I'm doing my job. It, yes, it makes sense to you in that capacity. But there's something again, either serious or humorous about like the keys. It could be again interpretation. Him being the key to the house, the household, something that yeah. simple. But I feel like there's a personal connection that he's bringing up here with then your mother and the key. So I'm going to say something here. I don't know if mom wasn't always available to be around him, but he wants to make sure that he tells her it's okay for the time that they were apart, if that makes sense. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. I feel like it's important for your mom to be part of the process, even though she can't physically be here, because I feel like the unloose ends is not really like saying I'm sorry, but it's really his ability not being able to communicate how much he loved his daughter. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. uh, they live in Santa Maria, and my parents live here in Ballin Park, so she wasn't around as much as she, and she always felt bad for not being there. So when he passed, um, she was on her way to Santa Maria and was going to see him the next day, and then he passed. Okay, please let her know that he, you know, some. here's the thing that I want you guys to understand is that certain souls will pass away when people are not around and when people are there. There was a purpose of maybe why he did not want your mom, his daughter to be there is because he knew she was strong enough to get through it. And I guarantee you that because I feel like it's important for your grandfather, your mother to understand the love and the compassion and more. He was, he was quite stubborn, your grandfather, you know what I mean? Quite stubborn. Yeah. And I think that was kind of like, people were afraid of him because they did not know if he was really going to yell at you or, or love you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like there's a way with him that he wants to show kind of like his humor side of things that he still has kind of like his smart ass attitude, his stubbornness and his, his way of loving, because I feel like the way that your grandfather would say, I love you would be a way of like embracing you. That was his way of giving love. It wasn't verbally saying it. So I feel like that your mom, if you can do it for your mom, if you have the ability to do it, next week, next month, or whenever you see mom, is just embrace her, give her a hug. Because I feel like it's something that she needs to know that her father, your grandfather, not only loves you while he's coming through, but her father still continues to love her, even from the afterlife. Because whatever happened here physically, there's no hard feelings for your mother and them. Was she one of six? One of six siblings? Yeah, there's a, yeah. How many is there? Not alone. <laughs> he literally has to go through everyone Six. okay so if that's the case then we need to then acknowledge the family so do you mind if i get personal are, are we recording yeah yeah okay you're good, you're good. see here's the thing i had no idea we we're still recording yeah, but here's yeah. the thing um i'm just gonna say this but there has to be then two of the siblings we got to remove from the family so is there um two family members that are removed then from your mom's family uh, that she doesn't communicate with Mm, no, just my dear Jerry who had passed away, which was a younger sibling. Is that the same uncle that we talked, like how I found? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then there's another person that I'm seeing that would be a sibling then to your mom. That would be considered an aunt or an uncle figure because they're removing two siblings. One just, yeah. yeah. So another one passed? Yeah, yeah but okay. it wasn't it wasn't a sibling. It was, a, I believe, an aunt. Okay. Makes sense to me. So we need to acknowledge then your uncle who obviously you know, orchestrated this whole event to happen through that video to come up for this to happen here today. For your aunt and your grandfather to come through and your dog to be here. Like, don't you believe like in signs, this is kind of like one of those signs because I did not know you. I did not even follow your podcast. That popped up. We connected. They orchestrated it, not us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. No, thank you. And, and one last thing, either for, you knew your grandfather though, correct? Yeah. Right? Either for you or for your mom, I might be wrong, but do you actually have like his leather belt or his leather wallet? His belt. You have his belt. Okay. He wants to make sure you take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take care of it. So if you wear it, if you have it in the closet, just know his soul and spirit is with you and he knows that you have it. All right. A lot of love to you. Seriously. He's with you. Ooh. 
yeah. yeah. See, this is where my emotions come <laughs> in now. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it was uh, it's funny you, you bring that up because it was uh, the week of his funeral and for the life of me, I didn't have a I didn't have a bout. So when I I was gonna go buy one, my my mom was just like, or my grandma was like, "Toma de, de tu abuelito." He knows. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, that's a beautiful thing. Seriously, like this just shows survival of the soul after death. You know what I mean? That they're still around us. I mean, they still see the things even after they're passing, not just before, not just during, but afterwards. Those things are nothing to do with me, but it's to help you heal from his passing. So no, in those moments that he's been gone, again, if it's been recently or many years ago, he's obviously still part of your life today. Yeah. Um, no, thank you, because I could tell my mom, and that's one thing she struggles with a lot is I'm not there, I can't be there, and I wasn't there. So I know she struggles with that a lot, and yeah, that's why... I don't know, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, when people always tell me, that, "Oh my God, it's crazy." It's part of the experience. <laughs> it's part of the experience of being around. It's part of the experience of having a medium or a psychic medium. Not every psychic medium is gonna, you know, do the readings or or do it or or you know if they have to. Or it, it again, it just really depends. Always try to allow people or try to let people know. Just let it happen organic. Let it let it respect the process to them. And I trust them more than I trust myself when I do the work. Because, like, if I try to reach to make, like, to read for someone. Yeah. So if you said, hey, read for Pepe, like, okay, I'm not connecting then. You know what I mean? That's why I said yeah. either I'm here with one of you guys, yeah. not to the girls, not to him. It's a, more of a feeling of yeah. where I get pulled to. So that's just either you or you, the girls are safe. You know what I mean? So it's how I feel and the direction that I'm getting yeah. drawn to, really. So now, question. Do you have any advice for people that may fear their gift? as a medium or a psychic? Um, I, I think the best advice, honestly, is just embrace it. You know, meditate, ground yourself, protect yourself. However you protect yourself, I, again, with me, I do prayer and music, prayer and meditation. Like music is my form of meditation, even after I meditate. So we will always have music in our house at some capacity. If it's yeah. classical, jazz, hip hop, you know, you name it, we've listened to everything. But that's a form of meditation. So kind of think of it for those that fear death or have anxiety of, of death. You know, like, oh, my God, I'm afraid what's going to happen and so on and so forth. As a kid, I used to fear death. Don't know why. Didn't, never lost anyone at a young age. Never had a near-death experience. Nothing traumatized me. Nothing. It was more of like knowing what was going to happen after my physical body was gone. Like I would have dreams and, and, and so on and so forth that I would see my own funeral and this and that at a young age. And again, never was really able to watch certain shows. So it wasn't being influenced by that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think the fear um, and having the understanding of there's life after death, there's soul, there's soul consciousness. There's actually studies on this, on soul consciousness, um, you know, that we're more than just a physical body, that the soul does evolve. So I think if you have fear, um, you know, read books, educate yourself, read into everything, but more so ground, protect yourself, and do, you know, simple techniques. If you have anxiety, again, about death or about dealing with your abilities, ground yourself, protect yourself, do a simple meditation, five to ten minutes, ground yourself, move through the chakras, or if, if meditation doesn't work for you, then uh, do prayer. If prayer doesn't work for you, then listen to music. Think, think of meditation, because people think meditation is like laying on the ground like yoga or sitting on the floor saying om. Yeah. It's not like that. Like my form of meditation could be something so simple. Like, and I always meditate with music. Always. So your way of meditation or your way or your way of meditation could be like you're in the kitchen and you're cooking dinner and so on and so forth. And you kind of go in a zone and you're kind of like, oh, shoot, I forgot about this. Or why did I was thinking about that? Because you're meditating. You're focusing on something else. That's a form of meditation. You're not focusing on the ingredients. You're not focusing on that. Yeah. You're in a different zone. So it's how you're tapping into that. It's just how we look at meditation. So I'm going to look at it again. It's laying on the floor doing own. But I think if you just protect and ground yourself. Trust in God or trust in a higher power, the universe, source, whatever you want to call it. That's all that matters. I mean, I always wear a cross. I've been wearing crosses for years. If it's not a bracelet, it's a chain, it's a necklace. If it's not a necklace, it's somehow something else that's on me. But, yeah. you know, I always believe in a higher power and I always believe it comes from good light and good intentions. And that's what everyone should always remember and think about because there are going to be people that are going to be, you know, religious and Christians and so on and so forth that, you know, 
you won't believe in it because it will say it's a demon's work, it's the devil, and this and that, which yeah. is all understandable. It's their belief, their understanding. I'm not here to make anyone a, a freaking believer. That's not my job. My job here is just to do messages, bring them through, give them to the people that need them. But if people can you know, can call me a demon, charlatan, whatever, I've been in this work for 22 years. I have very thick skin, so uh -huh. do it all you want. Yeah. Man, and that's a podcast, man. AJ, thank you for <laughs> thank you guys for, for doing what for you making do. them cry, for making us cry, and for sharing your knowledge and your experiences, and giving us a time of day to sit down and have a conversation with you. So, hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me, and I look forward to this uh, friendship with all you guys. Yes, Seriously, sir. yeah, Likewise. that's a live podcast. Make sure you subscribe, you share it, and man, I'll see you next time. Let's go. <laughs> see you